Ah, it's a 60 degree winter morning. Tried striper fishing the other day and the results were not very good. If you want to see me catch 18 inch striped bass, we can do that, but it will. Where I live in the Cape Fear region, uh, these striped bass actually have a moratorium on them and probably 90, I don't know, it's estimated the majority of them do not migrate as they're stocked fish and they kind of just stay in the river. And then there's a select handful that there is a chance that they move to the rest of the coast's pattern of south to north migration in the spring and then in the fall uh, north to south migration where they come back to the Cape Fear River to attempt to spawn or they do actually spawn so there is a couple of fish it's just not many uh let's do some speckled trout fish and see what happens you see what this is do you notice do you notice sometimes you just gotta go retro gotta go retro so uh yeah let's get some blood on the deck we got everything kind of organized brand new warrantied outback Classic red, post stormy skies, and I guess we're going to look for specks. Got our dry suit on, it's not that cold though. That's what we're fishing with today, um, it's a 3 8 sounds Kalen's Ultimate Jig Head. That's a new Elias Shad, uh, that's the 6 inch Whiptail and Chartreuse, and uh, yeah, we're going to work this for specks presumably, but you never know what we might end up catching. But Speckled trout's our target. All right, so um, here's what to do. I spool this up with the Fanatic braid. What I really like about this braided line, actually, is um, it doesn't wear down uh, the coating. What I hate about like Power Pro um, that the coating starts to wear down, and then the braid gets like I call it, it gets sticky. It picks up a lot of resistance, and it makes it like really unpleasant to fish with. This particular braid, it's like. There's no coating on it, so it stay, it retains this brand new feel the whole time. And uh, yeah, that makes it a lot easier to fish with, obviously. Um, it's really annoying for your braid to, you gotta like break it in every trip after a while. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna add a couple of these banks. Oyster banks are always good. And, like, oyster, oysters are never a bad place to start. All right, we got some life here. We got some life on the pictograph. All right. I think we might have found a couple. We're up against this bank. Nice. Well done. Well done, indeed. And, uh, yeah. Get out of the drive well there, my friend. Your mouth. Alright, we got a 15. These are better to eat, anyway. Your minimum size is 14, so... Yeah, definitely 15, 16. So we'll fill up the bag. Keep the smaller ones, let go of the bigger ones. So six inch bait, I was jerking it along the bottom, skipping it. That's really it. So not bad. Let's get our let's get our weekly dose of mercury poisoning going. Take it from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Test them. I suck at life. I do. I do suck a lot. I had that one. Yanked it out of, out of his mouth. Gotta take it slower, man. It's not everything's not a striper. You're not whaling on every fish like it's a 40 pounder, you know. Take it nice and easy. Definitely gotta work the bank more than the there he is.
getting right in the current there, man. Sick. Pretty good one, I guess. Yeah. Nice. See? The enjoyment of this particular fish is more the, the finesse game that you have to not pull the hook out as you get your your nicer fish. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, that's another decent one. These fish taste pretty good when they come out of the cold water also, so that's nice. Another nice bonus to it. Alright, that's two. Alright guys, so we are trout fishing a bank here. A, kind of like a rip was a rip um, these fish are pretty shallow so um, instead of risking spooking them with the kayak constantly I'm gonna try to jig a few from shore three right there and you can really put a beating on these fish when there's not much you know tra trash fish around like right now for example there aren't any blue fish around there aren't any pinfish around Got nice fish here why so kind of got him right on the plate there. It's number four. Alright. Pretty decent one. 18, 19. Catch and release from here on out. Right. Cool. This is the right call for today. Definitely having better action on the trout than I probably would on the stripers. Um, decent fish, so it seems like they're holding anywhere from like three to five feet of water. Maybe even shallower. Switch this up a little bit. I wanna, especially since the current's real slow, I want to really glide this presentation along, along the route of success. So, hmm. I'm drop it down to a quarter ounce, I'm thinking. Hmm. Yeah, that should work. We slacked out on our tide, we lost the outgoing. And we're waiting for some incoming water. Let's see what the incoming water brings. It's gonna bring a, another bite. It might. I don't know. It might bring cold water though too, so I don't know. I'd imagine both incoming and outgoing temperatures are about the same right now. It's just getting one of these fish to hit. That is the trickier part of the equation. All right, I'm just about ready to wrap this one up. Uh, yeah, just those four trout. Fishing a different tide now, that's not good. Uh, <clears throat> water warmed up, 57. But, um, yeah, I guess we're in that winter pattern right now. Find a couple of fish, probably not gonna find a whole lot. Uh, they're gonna bite on narrow windows. That's just I'm guessing. That is my guess. Got on the 
the swimming mullet, but uh, we'll put them back, right? Doesn't have many spots on him. Still been missing a couple. That looks more like a like a weak fish. Unique pattern on that guy. It's pretty unique. All right, so we've done this on camera a couple times, but um, so the new combination of how I like to fillet and clean the specks because they are kind of soft. Uh, for the fillet job, I'm just using a regular 7-inch fillet knife. To skin them, I'm using kind of a dull Dexter knife. Uh, what happens too often, you use a knife that's kind of sharp, you really cut through the skin of these guys pretty easily. Dull knife, regular 7-inch blade, and it seems to be giving me better results than my previous go-arounds with these guys. Okay, with this speckled trout, we will make a fish dip. So South Florida Fishing Channel, um, I found this recipe on his um, YouTube page, and I thought it would work pretty dang good with speckled trout. So we will give this a try. Uh, I will make my own little spin on it. And I thought speckled trout would be a very good choice to do a fish dip with for the people that don't have access to speckled trout. Weak fish would also probably work pretty well as a fish dip. And why I think trout would be good to make a fish dip with. It's soft. It's a softer fish. It's crumbly. When you play with these kinds of recipes, it's all about texture. Texture makes the difference. So uh, let's see how this goes. Just get a little bit of salt on it. And we're just going to throw this on the cast iron real fast to cook it. All right, we've got some pretty simple ingredients here. So first I'm going to start with about, let's say this is about a quarter cup of green onions or scallions. Predominant flavor. I'm going to use oregano. Um, I guess you can use parsley and other, you know, other herbs. Two tablespoons of sour cream, about two tablespoons of whipped cream cheese. I just used about a teaspoon of mayonnaise. I find mayonnaise to be kind of disgusting in this sort of thing. Next, we're going to grate some pepper jack cheese into there to get like a little melt going. About two and a half minutes per side. If it breaks apart, no big deal, really. We're going to be breaking it apart anyway. So we just pulled our trout off. If you used any oil, like I cooked it on a cast iron, I just used a drop of oil. Bought off any moisture. You don't want like any watery ugh, discharging. Just gonna add a little bit more salt and pepper to it. Top this off with a layer of shredded pepper jack cheese. All right, next ingredient, this is optional. I'm gonna put a couple of jalapenos on top. Tuco Salamanca's least favorite ingredient. A little bit of chili powder. We're gonna put this in the oven for about 10 minutes. We've got it at about 350 degrees, and then I'm gonna finish it off in the broiler. All right, we just switched it over to the broiler. Uh, about five minutes. Let's see if we can get a nice little brown finish on it. Mm, and there it is. You can brown the cheese more. I'm a very anti overly browned cheese kind of guy. So I just like a little browning. And yes, we're serving this with the thin Triscuit. Uh, it might not be strong enough to cut through. Oh, that looks good. This needs a nice cold beverage. Wow. Wow. Mm. If you are into speckled trout fishing and eating speckled trout and you want to try a new recipe or just an easy, quick, fun dish, uh, this will make great like bar food or appetizer. Holy crap, this is good. I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I really enjoy the taste of speckled trout, but I never thought speckled trout is this good. Made like this, this is freaking good. Like a cheese dip smoked salmon type, you're a smoked salmon dip type person. Man. Other fish I'd give this a try with, if you don't have speckled trout in your region, uh, lake trout should work pretty well, I guess. I'm kind of guessing on that one. Uh, weak fish I think I would give this a try with. Um, yeah, those are the, the two other ones. Alright folks, thank you for watching. 
There's uh, links in the video's description everything we use today. We'll have a recipe in the video's description. And that's about it. Good stuff, good fishing. Let's see what else the winter fishing brings us. Thank you for tuning in. I will catch up with you guys very soon.